Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Sony Point and Shoot WX350. Let's get started. The Sony WX350 is a point-and-shoot camera made for the photographer who wants something simple. It has a half-inch 18 megapixel sensor, has a 20 times zoom that is the equivalent to a 25 to 500 millimeter lens, and has a 10 frames per second continuous drive. The WX350 shoots 1080p HD video up to 60 frames, has built-in Wi-Fi to use with the Imaging Edge mobile app, weighs less than half a pound, and fits perfect in any pocket, purse, or bag. Today we will go over the simplicity of this camera and its features. So, playing with the Sony Point and Shoot, the WX350, I have found that this is probably one of the most simple put together cameras out there currently. Um, when it comes down to it, there's not a ton of buttons or menu options to go through, so this video may be fairly quick, but I'll go through it anyway because it was requested. It doesn't have the full manual options, you know, no manual mode, no aperture mode, no shutter speed mode. It uh, doesn't even shoot in RAW, so JPEG only. So if you are looking for a camera that will go to your parents or your grandparents, and they just want something to point and shoot, without any of the fancy doodads on the cameras these days, this is probably going to be the best camera uh, to get them. With the 20 times zoom and the clarity out of it, uh, this camera is actually a real winner. So to start off, you'll see that the front of this camera doesn't have much on it. It's letting you know the 20 times optical zoom here and here. That is a Sony G lens and it has an aperture of 3.5 to 6.5. Other than that, you need to be very careful around this surface here, as when you do turn the camera on, that is where the lead comes out and then retracts again when you turn it off. These barrels are incredibly sensitive. If they were to take any bump, if they were to be um, hit in any way, if they were to take a bump, if you get dirt, dust, moisture on this, and then decide, I'm gonna turn that off, that can all be sucked into the motor mechanism inside the camera, can gum that up, and eventually it just stops working. So, always be very careful when using that retract retractable lens. And also, when you do purchase this camera, I do recommend getting an accidental warranty on it as well uh, to cover any of those issues past the one year manufacturer warranty. You see we do have a flash here that's built onto the front. You do have to be careful with how small this camera is. You can easily block that with your finger, so you do need to keep that in mind when using this camera. We have our LED focusing light, which shines out when it feels that it there's not enough detail, if it's too dark, so it can assist the focusing for the camera itself. On the side of the camera, you can see that we have a spot for our wrist strap that does come in the box. And we do have a door here that says multi. This is going to be a micro USB port. This is going to be for charging the camera. The cord does come in the box to charge it inside the camera itself. You can also get external chargers as well um, that are sold separately. This is also for transferring images off the camera to your computer and a way to upgrade firmware if any firmware becomes available. On the other side of the camera, you can see all it says is Wi-Fi, letting you know that this camera does have Wi-Fi capability. As for the bottom of the camera here, you can see that we have our universal tripod mount. Just below that, you can see we actually have an HDMI port. Very strange spot for an HDMI port. Uh, rather than it being next to your charging port, it's on the bottom of the camera. So if you wanted to do a slideshow of your pictures, show some videos that you've taken on this, you can connect this to a television set, a computer monitor, just to show people what pictures you have in the camera itself. We also have a door here, which is going to be our door for our SD card and our battery. Keep in mind that the card is spring-loaded, so you want to push down before you pull that out, and then it springs back in. 
And of course, the way that you remove this battery if you wanted to is you have a little blue do door here. Move that out of the way, also spring loaded. On the top of the camera, you can see that we have our stereo mics right here. So when you do take a video, this is where the sound is going into. Uh, it does take it from all around the camera, so it'll be able to hear behind the camera, in front of the camera, side to side. So do keep that in mind if you do decide to do a video. We have your power button, so we have our on and off. Now you'll see that the top of that power button is gray. That is going to be your charger indicating light. When you plug your camera into the wall to charge the battery, that is going to light up orange if the battery needs to be charged, and then it will turn off when it's all done. We have our zoom lever here, so you're going to put it toward the T for telephoto. That's to zoom outward. The W is for wide angle, for the wide angle of getting um, all the details. Um, rather than just one of the details. So for example, if we move it to the T, you can see that barrel is going to move itself out to zoom out, and then the W will bring it on back. The middle of that is going to be your shutter button. So if you push halfway down, you'll hear that beep to focus. Then you push it all the way down to take the picture. That there was an example of the continuous drive at the uh, 10 frames per second that it can capture in. Here is your mode dial. Now on a lot of other cameras, you would have a lot more options. However, this being as simple as it is, we're just gonna go through these and let you know what's on which. So this right here, the little film strip, this is your movie mode. Now keep in mind, no matter what mode you have it on here, whether it be that one, the P mode, the gold eye camera mode, or the green eye camera mode, or heck, even the scene mode, I believe, you can do video. You don't have to put it to the film strip to do so. And to activate that video, all you have to do is push the red movie button. Push once to start recording, push again to stop recording. Very, very simple. The next setting we have here is going to be the P mode. This is going to be what they call programmed auto. Now this is the closest to any sort of manual mode that you're gonna see on this camera. What P mode basically does is rather than automatic, which does all the thinking for you, this allows you to choose whether or not you wanna use flash, uh, what focusing mode you wanna use, what metering mode you wanna use. Um, if you would like to choose your shutter speed or aperture um, to a very fine limit, but still more so with, than with auto, you can do that all in the P mode. So it's a good learning mode for when you just wanna take the bull by the horns and go, no camera, I wanna focus right here. And that's that versus the camera telling you where it wants to focus itself. So that just gives you more opportunities to customize those simple things. The golden eye camera mode is going to be your superior auto rather than the green intelligent auto, which we'll go over here in a moment. Uh, the gold is going to try and avoid any blurriness. It's going to try and promote sharpness while also controlling your settings to where it believes that is going to be the best picture for you. The green intelligent auto mode, that's what the eye stands for, is going to do what it thinks is best, not necessarily with blurriness or sharpness in mind um, alongside color, it's going to focus on the actual subject. So when you push your shutter button halfway down and say you're pointed at a person, it's gonna show a little person up in the corner of the screen versus if you get really close to an item. Now, this doesn't have a true macro option, so it doesn't allow you to get too, too close. Uh, the flowers that you saw in the example are probably the closest you can get with this camera, um, but it'll kick into a macro mode, just indicating you're getting close to something. Um, so it will do all of that thinking for you. Now, if you wanna have a little bit more control in the aspect of telling it the situation, rather than guessing it's a person or you're getting close or it's a landscape, you can actually dial into the SCN mode. This is gonna be your scene mode. Your scene mode, if we push OK here, is gonna allow you to tell the camera, I'm taking a picture of a person, a landscape, a night scene. It's, I'm hand holding it in twilight. It's a night portrait, anti-motion blur, backlight, 
pet, gourmet, beach, snow, fireworks, soft skin. You know, so it's going to give you quite a few options to play with to see if you, maybe you like it better on the different scene modes or if you like it better on auto mode. Either way, with how simple this camera is, it still gives you a lot of customization. The last mode that we have on top of this camera is going to be the eye with the little squishy rectangle symbol. This is going to be your panoramic mode. So you're going to start from the left side and you're going to slowly move to the right and follow the arrow on the screen while holding your shutter button down to take a nice wide panoramic image. We're going to go ahead and go through the rest of the settings in the P mode because that's going to show us all of our menu options versus a limited uh, select few on one of the automatic modes. So on the back of the camera here, we've already gone over our movie mode. Press once to start recording a video, push again to stop recording, fairly simple. We have our playback mode, but it'll show me uh, one of the more recent pictures that I took, which is of the fountain there, going in action. And then you can go um, left or right uh, to go through and see the ones that you've taken. Um, and then if you'd like to delete one, like that one didn't come out very good. So you can hit the little trash can down here and then go up to delete. And there you go. Uh, pretty simple there. Also, if you happen to get stuck in your playback menu or your actual menu, which we'll go over here in a moment, you just press your shutter button halfway down and it gets right back into shooting mode. Now we have shortcut buttons here on the outside of the circle. If we push up DISP, this is your display. So it's going to change the look that this screen has. So it has three screens. This one I like the best because it's very simple. It gives you your battery level, gave you your mode, and gives you your basic settings at the bottom as well. However, you'll see that in this one here, which is a little bit more complicated, um, but it shows you all the settings that are going on. You can see up here in the top, it's telling me how many pictures I have left. 3,407, oh, I'm sorry, 3,743, which is plenty, <laughs> especially for this camera. Otherwise, otherwise you could just go with a simple one here. Uh, if we push to the left, this is going to be our drive menu. So the one rectangle is going to allow you to take one picture at a time while you hit hold the shutter button versus the multiple frames there with the high on it. That's your 10 frames per second. Uh, when you click and hold this button down, that's what will happen. Then you have your timer modes as well as uh, your different bracketing modes too. If you hit to the right, this is going to be your flash option. So you can have no flash, flash on, slow sync, whatever you want to do there. If we hit down now in P mode, we don't get the creative option in our P mode because it's done a little bit differently. However, if I dial that into say automatic and then I hit down, what that'll do is allow us to adjust brightness. It allows us to adjust color from warm tones to blue tones, vividness of color, brighter versus duller. And then you have different picture effects as well. So you have high contrast black and white. We have partial color yellow. We have, we have partial color yellow. So if I hold my nail underneath, which is very colorful, it's going to be just picking up the yellow tones versus partial color blue, it'll just pick up the blue tones there. Green, just pick up the greens. Red, it'll pick up the reds too. Um, otherwise, you have soft key, you have retro photo, posterization, black and white, posterization color. You have pop of color, so that looks nice. You have toy camera, and then you have off. So you can do all of that in your automatic mode, but not your P mode, so please keep that in mind. Then we, of course, have the trash can here, which in shooting mode is going to allow that to be your question menu. Uh, so if you have questions about adding effects, freezing subject motion, using a flash, then you would go ahead and go here. Now we're going to go ahead and go into the menu itself.
We have five different subjects here. The first one is going to be our camera settings. So starting in camera settings, you can see that they're also lined up at the top here, the five options. Uh, we have five pages in the camera settings. So it starts with image size. You always want to have it in L for large. Now, yes, this is going to take up more room on your card, but believe me, you will not be sorry uh, having large photos because you can always downsize later, but you can never make small photos larger. So always keep it in L. Aspect ratio 4.3 is going to be the most common. I recommend just keeping it there for the most part. You want the quality in fine as well to get the finest quality. You can pick your panoramic size or direction. We have your file format for your video as well as how many frames. Uh, we have the drive mode here, which again is also accessible by pushing the left button. You have your flash mode, also changeable from the right button. Uh, red eye reduction if you do use flash. Focus area, you can do wide or center. Autofocus illuminator, that light in the front I was telling you about to help it focus. Uh, you can have that on automatic, on, off. You have exposure compensation, which is going to allow you to make the picture a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, or just what it recommends. You have your ISO settings. Now I was disappointed to find that you couldn't set a limit in here. So you either have to choose your ISO or let it be on auto. That's the only options. You have your metering mode, which I personally like spot, but check out my metering video if you want to learn more about that, unless you're an automatic shooter, then don't worry about it. We have your white balance, um, another way to adjust your warm and cool tones. Uh, picture effect, again, you can get that by pushing down, but not in the P option. Lock on autofocus if you'd like it to lock on. You have your smile and face detection. So if it uh, detects a smile, if it detects a face, it's gonna lock onto that. Soft skin effect. Um, auto object framing. This could be here or there. I have some people that love it, some people that hate it. What the auto object framing does was it, is it takes your picture and it makes a duplicate picture, framing it the way it thinks that you would have liked to uh, crop in on an image. So it's interesting. Some people find, oh wow, I actually like that better than the way I took it and didn't even think of it that way. Um, but it's up to you. You have your scene selection for when you're in your scene mode, your movie, steady shot, which is going to be stabilization when you're taking the photo, which this camera, I have to say, has excellent stabilization, especially when it's zoomed out at its farthest. You have auto, uh, auto slow shutter, wind noise reduction for when you're doing video, um, shooting tip list. And then we're on to the next tab here, which is going to be our general settings. We have the grid line, which will help you compose your image, make it straight. We have your auto review for when the picture pops up on the screen for so much time before it goes away. You have your zoom setting. I like to keep this on optical zoom only. Some people like the fact that it has digital zoom so you can actually get past uh, 20 times, but when it gets to that point, it starts tearing apart those pixels and that means that you're getting less clarity in your photos. I like clear photos, so I use optical only. Um, you can put the date on your photographs if you'd like it to write the date. Uh, the movie button, if you would like that to always be able to record in every mode. The third tab is going to be our wireless tab. So you can send pictures from the camera to your smartphone or tablet. You can also send to your computer, which is a little bit trickier. I, I don't recommend, I just recommend plugging the camera directly into the computer to do so. View on a TV. You can control this with your smartphone. Use the smartphone as a remote control. Uh, airplane mode, I recommend putting it in airplane mode when you're not planning on transferring your pictures anytime soon because uh, having this, all this on can drain the battery. So I would personally put airplane mode on when you don't plan on transferring photos or controlling it, you know, within the next hour or so. Uh, then we have WPS foot push, another internet option. You can edit your device name, change it to um, like your, you know, your name camera or your name Sony uh, to be able to find it easier in the app. You can also do like password re reset, network reset, you know, that type of thing. 
The fourth tab is going to be our playback tab. This is going to allow you to do things to pictures you've already taken. You see it matches the symbol here in our playback button. You can delete, you can view, you can show an index, you can do a slideshow, you can rotate images, um, you can protect images, beauty effect, all that sort of thing. And then the last one here is going to be our toolbox. So this will allow you to change settings directly um, related to the camera, like your monitor brightness, your volume settings when you play back pictures, uh, your audio signals, if you'd like it to beep uh, when you push your shutter button halfway to let you know it's focused. You have your tile menu if you'd like it to display that way, or if you want it to just come up just like this. Uh, you can do your mode gu dial guide if you would like that to turn on or off to remind you what each of those modes do. The display quality, standard's just fine. Uh, power save start time, after so much time not doing anything, after two minutes it turns itself off to save battery. You can change that time on there. <clears throat> your HDMI resolution to connect it to a computer or a television, I would just keep it on auto. Um, you know, your USB connections or power supply, your language, the date and time, your area setting. Uh, format. This is something I like to talk about on every camera, on every walkthrough that I do. And there's a reason, because it's important. Um, formatting, what that does is it permanently deletes every picture off of your card. So you would naturally not want to find this on accident. The reason that you would want to do this is after you've taken all of the pictures off your SD card that are in the bottom of your camera here, and you've made sure they're on your computer, not just on the camera, you've triple checked it, and you wanna start over, you know, because you don't have to buy another card, you don't have to. All you have to do is go into your menu and go to format, and that permanently deletes everything. Now, you'd wanna do that rather than using the trash can, um, because the trash can just deletes the visible picture. It doesn't delete the background data that makes up the picture. So, when you format, it actually erases the data, the visual image, everything. And that keeps your card nice and healthy. Now, if you're the type of person that for every new event or trip or situation, you go out and buy a new SD card and you put this one away for safekeeping, you can do that too. I just, you know, want to make sure that you know what format is. That way it doesn't get accidentally pressed and then you lose all your precious memories. You can change the file number, select record folder, new folder, display media info, the uh, version of your firmware. You can see if that needs to be updated. And then you have setting reset. So if you are playing with the camera and now it's doing something that you don't know what it did, you can actually go in and reset your settings to how it came out out of the box. Um, and hopefully that'll fix the problem for you. Other than that, that pretty much sums up this camera. Like I said about the WX350, it's a great camera for somebody that loves something simple. All it is is a physical point and shoot. That's it. Super simple, nothing crazy, and it's so small and travel friendly. It's pretty fantastic. Not to mention that the photos that come out, even though they're JPEG, and there's nothing wrong with that, came out pretty darn fantastic. If you have any questions about this camera, something I didn't go on, go on in enough detail, if you want to request a specific camera to have a walkthrough of, please leave a comment below so I can get to that. And until next time, keep your out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.